shoulder the responsibility of failed private banks. This has been the administration that prosecuted more whistleblowers in two years than the preceding forty. The HSBC funded the 9-11 terrorist attack. What is the hot sauce? The 32 trillion dollars stash in the Cayman Islands. So London is really the headquarters for global banking fraud. And military leaders say it will come faster than we've seen in the past. Testing in confidence that they can use their weapons. We must declare war on war, so the outcome will be peace of heart. What is wrong with these people? Tariqa Taliban Pakistan, TTP, has declared war against Pakistan after the liquidation of its commander, Umar Khalid Khorasani, who was taken out by Pakistani secret services in collaboration with the Pakistani military. The Pakistani Taliban has issued a statement after the incident calling the army of Pakistan the Dollar Army and an enemy of Islam. So who are the Pakistani Taliban TTP? The TTP is a byproduct of the intra-jihadi politics that followed the 2001 US invasion of Afghanistan. The Pakistani Taliban claims that its armed struggle aims to establish an Islamic political system in Pakistan based on the group's interpretation of Sharia law. A task, it says, was the main goal of establishing Pakistan in 1947. Which is a bogus claim if you ask me, because the father of Pakistan, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, who thought of the idea of Pakistan, was an Ismaili, a fringe offshoot sect of Shia Islam. He wasn't Salafi, he wasn't Wahhabi, he was not Diobandi, but an Ismaili, which is different to mainstream Shia Islam. But anyway. The Pakistani Taliban is a terrorist organization operating on the Pakistani and Afghan border. The group refers to itself as Pakistani Taliban. They also swear allegiance to the Afghan Taliban as well as admire Al-Qaeda and ISIS, having worked with them closely. The Pakistani Taliban was formed by merging several armed terrorist organizations. TTP was founded in 2007 by notorious terrorist Baitullah Masood, who's said to be responsible for the death of former and late Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto. At present, the command of this terrorist organization is in the hands of Noor Wali Masood. Noor Wali has publicly expressed allegiance to the Afghan Taliban as well. TTP is operating from Afghanistan. Its headquarters are based there and they are tolerated by the Afghan Taliban, which makes things complicated. Here, the Taliban government has given shelter to the TTP who attack the Pakistani army and civilians on a daily basis. When I speak, I generally don't like to hold back. I'll let you know, the important government of Pakistan, the regime of Shabazz Sharif, is so afraid of this organization, the Pakistani Taliban, that it has to bow down in front of these terrorists and have peace talks with them. But at the same time, we also have to give it to the secret intelligence service of Pakistan that dared, in the midst of these talks, Pakistan dared to take out a few fellas from the Pakistani Taliban. And this is the reason why this terrorist organization, the Pakistani Taliban, are angry and upset and they've started to attack Pakistan and the Pakistani army. Only a couple of days ago, four soldiers of the Pakistani army lost their lives in Waziristan. The Pakistani Taliban has also threatened Pakistan that it will create an Islamic emirate on either side of the Durand line. This is how it will look like. There's going to be one Islamic Emirate for the Afghans and another Islamic Emirate for the Pashtuns under the TTP, the Pakistani Taliban. Things are so bad between the Pakistani Taliban and the Pakistani government that the Pakistani Taliban have said they will hold off from peace talks with Pakistan in the future. I'm sharing this information with you because I want you to open your mind. I'm not trying to convert you. I'm not trying to do you any good, nor any harm. I'm just doing my own stuff. I talk this way, like birds sing. It helps me understand. I'm interested. I'm full of wonder about this wonderful universe, and I truly want to understand. I've been getting a lot of messages from radicals who support the Pakistani Taliban, as well as the Afghan Taliban, and even Al-Qaeda. I go onto their profiles, I see that they are based in the United States or the United Kingdom. And some, even in India, 
Actually, there's a few from India. I do wonder if these people support these groups so much, what are they doing in the United States? The United Kingdom and India. Now with the rise of the Pakistani Taliban, they have a choice to choose the extremism of the Afghan Taliban or the extremism of the Pakistani Taliban. Isn't it just like being in a candy shop? Sure, the Afghan Taliban have changed, but only slightly. I was hoping to see a lot more of the change, but the change has been too little and too late. They're on Twitter these days. It shows they're embracing technology. Well done. Televisions were banned under the Taliban regime's first incarnation, while Afghans now have access to the internet and social media. There are some girls in Afghanistan who are allowed to go to school, but then there are other parts of Afghanistan where girls aren't allowed at all. However, the children of Afghan Taliban officials are happily studying in American universities based in Qatar. Do you see the hypocrisy? And then these people promise nations that they will not allow Afghanistan to become a den of terror. Yet terror groups are happily residing in their country. I give the Afghan Taliban plus points for removing the Americans and NATO from Afghan soil. But what about having a fair representation of Afghan society in government? What about getting rid of terror networks? By sheltering radical groups, the Afghan Taliban are not doing the world, neither themselves, any favours. And my point is proven by the resurrection of the Pakistani Taliban, the TTP. Where is it all heading? What appears to most reasonable and rational people is, you have one Taliban camp which is pushing ahead with what they're seeing as reforms and another camp that seems to think even these reforms are too much and they don't want to be a part of it. So they want to carve out another nation by taking over Afghan Pakistani territory. And who's to blame for all this? Is it lack of education? Most probably. The Saudi scholarship since 9-11 has brainwashed a lot of people to say Quran and Sunnah is enough for us. But what does it actually mean? The Afghan Taliban think that, so do the Pakistani Taliban, as well as ISIS-K and so many of these other groups that still reside in places like Iraq and Syria and Libya, each having their own interpretations of Quran and Sunnah. Don't you see it? They all want to outdo one another in religiosity. I call it religious upperhandism. It's not just in Islam, it happens in every single faith. But because of the money that's been pumped into all these unregulated madrasas across the globe by the Saudis and the Americans, we see it a lot more in our countries than others. TTP, the Pakistani Taliban, want to be more Islamic than the Afghan Taliban. And then there's ISIS, who want to be more Islamic than the Afghan Taliban and the TTP, the Pakistani Taliban combined. It's a vicious cycle. Don't fall into their trap. Islam is a religion of mercy and benevolence. Particular attention in our religion is given to kindness in relationships between people. The kinder a person is to others, the more merciful God is to them. All these groups that operate in Afghanistan and the wider region today are not kind people. They don't smile, they hardly wash, look at them. They're not like the Prophet of Islam. They don't have your interests at heart, they are drunk drunk on their idea of what religion should be and if you don't follow their ideas you're taken out it's what the culture of takfirism promoted by the saudis has done to the muslim world if pakistan wants to survive it has to cut ties with these terror groups and declare itself neutral and for that to happen it needs a neutral leadership in power over and out